Let me tell you about the story of the character Sisyphus. In Greek myth, Sisyphus was a man who escaped death twice. The first time, he somehow chained death up to a rock. How he did this, I have no idea. Like, those must be some pretty strong chains. This led to everyone being... The god of war Ares got so mad, and so he freed death, and the two of them stomped on over to where Sisyphus was, and they were like, Alright bro, now you gotta come with us. Well, Sisyphus was just a regular man after all, so he had no way to fight the two of them. He said, okay, okay, but first let me say goodbye to my wife. Hey listen, don't bury me the usual way, just like put my body out back by the dumpster or something. And so Sisyphus died and went with death and Ares into the underworld. Um... Are you sure you're supposed to be here? Uh, it says here that you weren't buried with your last rites and all that. Oh, darn, what a shame. Oh, well, you know how it is. I'll just uh, head on up and we'll get that sorted right away. And then he lived for another 80-something years. All right, old man, you've had your fun. Now you're coming with me and no tricks this time. And so the two of them went to the underworld. This time with proper papers so that Sisyphus could finally have his eternal rest. Which is what I would say if death wasn't petty. Because Sisyphus tricked them twice, death came up with the real juicer of a punishment. He tasked Sisyphus with rolling a large boulder up a hill. And every time he would reach the top, the boulder would simply roll back down to the bottom where he would have to start the process all over again. Forever. This is why in the modern day we refer to a difficult and unending task as Sisyphean, otherwise known as game development. It's been a while since we last talked. What's it been, like over half a year since the first devlog? In any case, we've been pretty busy with things. Over the last several months, we've added a host of new enemies and programmed their combat mechanics into the game. A lot of these will be enemies that you'll end up encountering later on, so I don't want to spoil the surprise too much, but we'll go over the basics. Starting off, we've added a new enemy called the Firestarter. This melee-focused unit will rush the player and perform a variety of different combos with her flaming wrecking ball. I really like this design and creating the various concepts for her was a lot of fun. She was originally going to have a pack of Molotov cocktails that she would throw towards the player, causing environmental hazards from the flames. Noelle had this idea of giving her a wrecking ball that she would fling around, and so we combined the ideas together. The next new enemy is a tall robot called the Iron Whale. He carries around a massive harpoon that he uses to fire at the player. If the player gets hit with his harpoon, the Iron Whale will immediately begin to reel him in like a fish, making movement a bit more difficult. Three other additions are sort of in the same family of stone golems. These golems are sort of like precursors to the robots who inhabit the island. And they don't like their sleep being disturbed by all the commotion that's happening. They're tanky enemies that create environmental hazards for the players, so being aware of your surroundings is a must. Speaking of tanky enemies, we've also added a new lumbering robot that acts to pressure the player from a distance. The Crab Shack is a hulking beast with a spiked shield that can only be attacked from behind. Next up is the Siren, a fast-moving melee enemy that has the ability to deflect projectiles with her sonic scream. You'll need to find other means of attacking her or try to get out of the way. Lastly, we've added the Corsair, an elite enemy unit that is amongst the most agile and dynamic of the foes you'll encounter. He's got dodging, he's got a shield, he's got melee and projectile attacks, and he's sporting a really sick mustache while doing it. This guy's just so cool. On to the behind the scenes stuff. I've been hard at work trying to crunch bugs that have popped up during testing. We've done a couple of rounds of internal testing with the current roster of enemies and- We got the survey results back from the lab. Ah! Uh, by the way, here's another bug I found. So that went well. We've also made some changes to a lot of the visuals in the game, particularly with how a lot of the projectiles look. I admit, I may have gone a bit overboard with the particles early on in production. Some of our playtesters complained that the visuals became too muddled, so I've reduced them for better visibility. Enemies can now have multiple hitboxes on different parts of their body. Before, they usually just had one big capsule collider that encompassed the whole mesh, but now they actually have critical points that you can hit. This will be useful for bosses especially. I've updated the save and checkpoint system to include interactive objects. So for instance, say you've completed a puzzle, and an animated series of gears have been opened. Now if you reload that save, the gears will stay open. I've also reintegrated basic swimming mechanics that were available in earlier builds of the game. I had taken them out at some point because of some movement bugs with the climbing that were happening, but it's been ironed out for the most part. Since we now have swimming, I've also added a new swimming enemy prototype. Isn't he adorable? 
We're still in the concept art phase for this enemy, but it was a bit of a headache to try and get this thing working. Since the standard Unity nav mesh system technically only accounts for 2D movement, I initially tried fiddling with it to jerry-rig some tweaked version of our flying enemy. It sort of worked, except for when it would phase through walls because it wasn't about to let something as silly as physics get in the way of what it wanted. In any case, I spent the better part of a Saturday trying to figure out a solution to this thing, and I eventually got something working. It's not perfect by a long shot, but it'll have to do. Especially since there's only really gonna be like one or two enemies that use this system. We've also added stationary turrets. The designs are still in the concept phase, but they're mechanically functional now. These turrets will seek the player when he's in view, forcing the player to use cover to his advantage, especially since these projectiles can't be deflected. I was actually really happy with how well this enemy worked and how relatively straightforward it was to program. Lastly, I have added a new system regarding the boss health UI. Previously, each boss would have a child UI game object that would hold its health bar that would appear at the top of the screen. But this kind of prevented us from being able to add multiple health bars, say in the case we wanted to add multiple bosses. <clears throat> then I learned about Unity's vertical layout group that solved a lot of my problems. And look at that, the health bar system is now decoupled so it runs off of an event system instead of the previous manual assignment. Overall, I was really pleased with how this one turned out, and it only took me about half a day, so not bad. Man, the year is over halfway already. In any case, we've still got a ton of work ahead of us, especially in terms of level design and tying the whole story together, which is mostly written, though we're in the process of some tweaks and rewrites to better improve the level flow. So, uh... Yeah, that's all folks. If you'd like more frequent updates on the game, you can check out the links below.